In this video we are going to learn how to read centrifugal pump nameplate data as well as how to apply some important formulas to calculate the RPM, the flow rate, the pump power, the head pressure and the impeller diameter. We will also see what happens if we try to modify some of these parameters and which formulas we have to use in order to determine what will be the new performance of our pump. Every centrifugal pump has a nameplate like this one which lists some of the most important data. Unfortunately, these nameplates sometimes become faded, damaged and illegible over time. So, some very important technical data may be missing. Luckily, some formulas can be used to calculate and obtain this missing data. Jaez, thanks to his technical know-how on a wide range of centrifugal pump types, has become a qualified partner for some of the most important pump manufacturers. Name plates are used to designate the manufacturer as well as to identify the product thanks to pump series, size, model and serial number which is a unique sequence of numbers and letters assigned incrementally or sequentially to the pump in order to uniquely identify it. Name plates are also used to designate the properties of the product such as the maximum working pressure value as well as many other that we are going to see in a moment. As we already learned in our previous video, the basic principle of a centrifugal pump is to transfer volumes of fluid from a region of low pressure to a region of high pressure. The atmospheric pressure in fact pushes the fluid thanks to the vacuum created by the rotating element of the pump, the impeller, which allows the water to flow from the suction side to the discharge side. Pump performance changes depending on the impeller diameter and RPM. RPM or revolutions per minute is the number of revolutions or cycles completed in one minute by the impeller, which converts the mechanical energy first into kinetic energy and then into hydrodynamic energy. The flow rate instead is the volume of fluid that can be moved by the pump in a unit of time. Generally, the flow rate can be expressed in cubic meters per hour, liters per minute, or liters per second. In imperial measurement systems instead, the flow rate is usually expressed in gallons per minute, as we can also see here in our plate. We can simply define the head pressure as the ability of a pump to elevate at a certain height a certain number of cubic meters of fluid. This value depends on the suction head of the pump, so if the RPM is increased or decreased. The pump power is the power consumed by the pump in order to move and increase the pressure of a fluid. The power requirements of the pump depends on a number of factors, including its motor efficiency. Let's try now to modify some of these parameters and calculate the results. Let us remember that these calculations will only provide us with theoretical values, the actual performance of the pump could in fact be slightly different compared to these results. The first value we are going to calculate is the RPM of the pump. What RPM we need if we want to change the original flow rate of our pump? The new RPM value is equal to the original RPM value multiplied by the division between the modified flow rate and the original flow rate. Following the calculations, we cancel out the gallons per minute so we find this ratio that multiplied by the original RPM will result in 1500 RPM which is the rotation speed that the impeller must reach to withstand the new flow rate. Using the metric system we can see that the flow rate values are in liters per second. Now let's find out what will be the new flow rate if we want to change the RPM of the pump from its original value of 1800 to 1500. To do that, we will use this formula, that is the modified value of the RPN multiplied by the division between the original flow rate, which is 1236.3 gallons per minute, and the original RPM. Following this formula, the result will be 1030.3 gallons per minute. Using the metric system, we can see that the flow rate values are in liters per second and the resulting flow rate is 64.9 liters per second. 
Now we are going to calculate the value of the new flow rate in the case we need to change the diameter of the impeller. So in this case, the new flow rate is equal to the modified diameter of the impeller multiplied by the division between the original flow rate, which is always 1236.3 gallons per minute, and the original impeller diameter, which is 10.24 inches. Following these formulas, the result will be 1054 gallons per minute. Using the metric system, we can see that the impeller diameter values are in millimeters, and the resulting flow rate is 66.6 .6 liters per second. If we want to find out the value of the new head pressure, in the case we are going to change the RPM, always from 1800 to 1500, first of all, we need to square the value of the modified RPM and multiply it by the division of the original head pressure, which is 198 feet of water, and the original RPM value squared as well. Make sure to square both of these RPM's values, I wrote this number not in a standard form to see every single value and get the result of 138 feet of water. Using the metric system we can see that the original head pressure value is in kilopascal and the resulting new head pressure is 412 kilopascal. Now we are going to find out what is the value of the new head pressure if we are going to change the flow rate this time from 1236.3 gallons per minute to 1030.3 gallons per minute. To do that, we have to multiply the original head pressure by the division of the modified flow rate value and the original flow rate value, making sure to square the number we get from this division. Squaring the result of this division, we obtain this value that multiplied by the original head pressure value allows us to get 138 feet of water, or 410 kilopascal. The next step is to calculate the pump power. So, to calculate what is the new power, if we are going to change the RPM, always from 1800 to 1500, we have to cube the value of the modified RPM and multiply it by the original power value and the original RPM value, cubed as well. Make sure to cube the values of the modified and the original RPM. By multiplying these numbers, we can notice that the new power will come down to 54.3 horsepower compared to the initial 87.17 horsepower. Using the metric system, we can see that the pump power values are in kilowatt and the result is 37.5 kilowatt. In conclusion, we are going to calculate the pump impeller diameter. How much should the impeller diameter measure if we want to reach the modified flow rate value of 1030.3 gallons per minute? This calculation is using the case where the impeller is actually trimmed down to meet the new flow rate. Also in this case, we cancel out the gallons per minute of this division to find this ratio which we multiply by the original impeller diameter, which was 10.24 inches, to find 8.53 inches or 260.3 millimeters. Well, we hope you find this video helpful. Let us know by giving a thumbs up. If you're interested in this kind of topics and you want to support us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find out our next project on our website, chessecompany.com.